Hi, my name is Christy Kozar and I'm the Regional Coordinator for the Pittsburgh Sea Perch Regional Competition. This year they have changed the writing portion of the project and you will be asked to do a technical report instead of turning in your notebook. Now you should still keep a notebook. It's a very important tool so that you can remember everything that you've done throughout the process and when it comes then to writing the technical report you'll pull your information out of that notebook. So it's still really important to keep your notebook, to keep it organized and to make sure that you are up to date with the notebook. The engineering design process is going to be featured heavily in the technical report. So I want to do a small video today to let you know what the engineering design process actually is. And it's really pretty simple, but as you go through, you need to talk about each of these steps. The first thing that you need is you need an objective or goal. In this case, your objective or goal is given to you by Sea Perch. You have a challenge this year. The challenge is called waterway cleanup and your Sea Perch is going to need to pick up things uh, like plastic bottles and straws. Um, they're going to be floating on the surface. So you're going to need to have some way that your Sea Perch can grab those. The other thing that you will need to do is uh, you have an obstacle course and that's going to depend on the speed of your ROV. The faster it goes, the better chance that you have of finishing higher. So you are given a kit from Sea Perch. You either uh, your school purchased it or you might have sponsors that purchased it for you, but somebody purchased a kit for you and you then are not going to actually be designing the first iteration. Remember that word, that's an important word. Uh, the first iteration of the design has been done by Sea Perch. So really you just need to follow the directions and build it. And your mentors and your teachers should help you to build the ROV. Now, once it's built, you're going to have the standard, what we call stock kit made. And it's just, it's a very rectangular, uh, about this big ROV. And once you have that built, you need to test it. So you'll put it in the pool or uh, the first thing that you need to test is actually the buoyancy. So if you're not at a pool that day, um, your teacher could get a, gar a one of the large garbage cans. Um, we've done that in my classes before where we just fill the garbage can up with water. And when figuring out the buoyancy, you just need it to, to float at a certain point. You don't want it floating up at the top of, of the pool or the garbage can or whatever you're using. Um, but you don't want it to sink to the bottom either. When you put your pool noodles and things on, you'll need to test the buoyancy to have, so it should be floating in the middle where it sort of just hovers in the middle of the water. You will then evaluate your tests. And at that point, you will have to redesign your stock kit. Your stock kit is not going to pick up or move or be able to easily move things that are floating on the surface or the other things that you might have to do, um, you have to disable an underwater mine. So you have to actually like turn something, there's something you can remove. Now, if your sea perch can't do it in the form that you have built it in, you have to redesign it. That's your second iteration. That's a good engineering word and you do need to include science and engineering words in the technical report. So you need to modify your stock kit so that it can complete the challenge and meet the objectives or goals. Now you may also have other goals. You may want a sea perch that is easy to drive. Some sea perches aren't easy to drive uh, if you don't have the buoyancy right or if uh, your motors are unaligned. So those are things that you may need to, you may need to even reposition your motors to make it more maneuverable or easier, easier to control. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need at the very least to add something to your sea perch that can accomplish the tasks in the challenge. If you didn't have the challenge, you could go with the stock sea perch kit and get it through the obstacle course. It may not be the fastest, but it would work, but it's going to be very difficult for you if you don't make changes to your sea perch in order to finish that challenge. So at this point with design iteration number two, you'll redesign, you and your teammates will think of what you need to possibly accomplish the tasks that you're set forth in, in the challenges. Once you've come up with an idea, you're going to rebuild it. You can change the shape of the sea perch. You can make it smaller, bigger, flatter, whatever you want to do with it. You'll rebuild it 
using a modification materials that you will need to account for cost you have a, a you have a budget of twenty five dollars that is one of your constraints there's another engineering word you can't go over twenty five dollars so after you've rebuilt it you'll retest it put it back in the pool see now can it grab those objects can it disarm that underwater mine can it do the things that you need it to do and if the answer is still no guess what you have to start again that's iteration number three you'd redesign again rebuild retest it reevaluate if it's still not up to par go back again so really it's a very repetitive cycle you have an objective you design you build you test you evaluate what do you need to improve on then you make a new design rebuild it retest it reevaluate it and does it meet those qualifications now and if not go back again engineers are always going through this process think about tvs when i was younger tvs were not flat panels they were very big and bulky how can we make a tv better well here's some ideas i have well let's build it let's test it and see does it you know meet those qualifications they've made tvs lighter they've made them bigger they've made them using different technology now uh, when I was younger, they had big vacuum tubes inside, uh, and now they don't use that anymore. So over the years, TVs have gotten, they've been able to make them smaller and more compact. They've been able to improve the picture quality of televisions. So engineers are always trying to redesign and improve upon the things that they work on in their field. And there's many different fields of engineering. Possibilities are almost endless. If you like a specific field for something there's probably an engineering field that you can get into i know my daughter is very interested in environmental science and she wants to be an engineer working with the environment so an environmental engineer is what she would like to be when she grows up so there's a pretty much an endless possibility if you like engineering if you like what you're doing but maybe you don't like robotics you could always use this process in other areas Keep in mind the definition of engineering is using science to make our lives easier. So anything in our world that needs improved upon, that would be an engineer that would do that. And sometimes you might not even think about what you're doing, but you may actually be engineering when you are you know, building a fort out in your backyard. Thank you so much for listening to my video today. I hope that it can help you. I do plan to put one up uh, about the technical report more specifically, but I am still working on that so that you'll have an idea of what's expected in the technical report. Um, so keep an eye out for that. That'll be coming soon. If you do have any questions about the engineering design process, leave a comment below and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much. Bye.